In today's video, you're going to get a head start on everyone else for Season 14, as we'll be providing you with an itemization guide for every single role. With all the new items being released and mythic items no longer existing, it may be overwhelming to try and figure everything out yourself, but by the end of this video, you'll have a much better understanding of many of the new build paths and which champions can use them for Season 14. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money-back guarantee if you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. Starting off with the top lane, one of the biggest shifts to the meta revolves around Divine Sunderer being removed and replaced by Sundered Sky. Now, Sundered Sky does not work exactly the same as Divine Sunderer, as it's not a Sheen item anymore, and its passive bonus damage can only be procced every 6 seconds instead of every 1.5 seconds, which is the cooldown of Spellblade. Because of this, we feel that Trinity Force is now going to reign supreme on a lot of champions who used to like Divine Sunderer. Just looking at a damage test here, Trinity Force wins out with an auto W auto combo on Jax, and this damage difference will become even more insane throughout an extended fight due to the short cooldown on the Spellblade proc. Now, the one thing that Sundered Sky does have going for it is that the heal you get from the passive proc is pretty massive. So the question then becomes, is that heal enough to make up for the drastic drop in DPS power? If you're in a matchup where you need to take short trades to win out, playing around that 6 second cooldown of the Sundered Sky passive would work really nicely. Vice versa, if you're stomping lane and want to really push your advantage in the 1v1, rushing Trinity Force will help you way more. In theory, that's how it should work, but with the damage difference just so massive between Trinity Force and Sundered Sky, we see Trinity being the front runner rush option on many bruisers like Wukong, Nasus, Jax, Camille, Fiora, and Poppy. Of course, top laners who were running Trinity already like Gnar and Trundle will continue picking it up. Now remember, mythic items no longer exist, so so even though you may want Trinity Force earlier on in the game, you can still build Sundered Sky second or third. A three item core we think will be really great on someone like Jax consists of Trinity Force, Sundered Sky, and Spear of Shojin. For someone like Camille who wants to play around her cooldowns a little more instead of just autoing the enemy to death, Sundered Sky as a rush makes a lot of sense. You just play around the six second passive cooldown on Sundered Sky and have a lot of upfront power that way. As if Stridebreaker wasn't already a great pickup on the likes of Darius and Garen to help with their sticking power, the item becomes even more nasty for C Season 14. You not only slow the enemy with the active, but you also gain 30% decaying movement speed now. This bonus movement speed will make the item much more attractive on picks like Fiora and Urgot, who gain a lot of value from being able to reposition. The fact Gore Drinker is being removed as well should lead to a build shift for a few top lane champs. There honestly aren't a ton of top laners running Gore Drinker at high rates in Season 13, other than Renekton, Aatrox, and Aurelia, so the item being removed won't lead to a big shift in top lane builds. Aatrox is one champ who will have a completely new look for Season 14 because both Gore Drinker and Duskblade are gone. With Spear of Shoujin now being rushable, Shoujin into Stridebreaker is a front runner to succeed on Aatrox. Eclipse could always make a comeback as well if you want a more burst focused build. Eclipse is actually being changed so it's no longer a lethality item and instead gives you more flat AD so Eclipse into Shoujin on Aatrox should also work really well. Experimental Hexplate is the only other new bruiser item being introduced and its power is loaded into its passive. Base stats are standard with AD, health, and attack speed. The passive gives you 30 ultimate ability haste, and after casting your ult, you gain 35% attack speed and 15% movement speed. With Gore Drinker now gone from the game, this could be a really interesting replacement for Renekton. A core of Hexplate and Spear of Shoujin would offer up a ton of dueling power in the 1v1. The ultimate ability haste will really allow Renekton to push his early to mid game advantages and close out games easier. Other top laners who are more ult reliant and that also want attack speed like Olaf and Trundle will be the biggest winners with Hexplate. AP top lane champions are going to become very difficult to blind pick for Season 14 because of the introduction of Kainic Rookern. This item offers 80 magic resist, 20 MR higher than Spirit Visage, which has the second most MR for any tank item. Not only do you get a mass amount of magic resist, but you also gain a magic shield. The trading pattern around Kainic Rookern will be disgusting for tanks because you'll go in for a short trade, win out massively due to the MR and shield, and then dip into the fog of war and wait for the passive shield to come back up again. Tanks like Cassante, Scion, Orn, Mundo, Cho'Gath, Tom Kench, and even a bruiser like Nasus should really like this pickup to hard counter AP matchups. For the most part, Jock Show, Iceborne Gauntlet, and Heart Steel will remain core rush items on tanks.
tanks, however, the Canic Rooker tech is something new to watch out for. There are also two more new tank items called Hollow Radiance and Unending Despair, and both have similar passives that will provide you with damage over time. The main difference between the two is that Unending Despair has armor and Hollow Radiance has magic resist. Bami Cinder is a component to Hollow Radiance, so you can kind of think of it like Sunfire Aegis, but with magic resist. Now, in games where enemy comps are heavy AP, but you still want some added shoving power on your tanks, you won't have to go Sunfire and can instead prioritize Hollow Radiance. Overall, tanks having these added options now, especially the extra magic resist items, should make them very deadly for the start of Season 14. Everyone will want to be trying out mages and AP champs due to the new AP items, so spamming tanks to counter that should be really OP. AP Bruisers are another class of top lane champions who will see their builds change for Season 14. Singed, Mordekaiser, and Rumble all liked running Demonic Embrace in Season 13, but now that the item is gone, they're going to swap over to Leandris. Leandris is now very similar to Demonic Embrace, as it no longer has mana or haste, and instead gives you health and AP for the stats. Leandris' new passive also has the burn damage along with the damage amp for being in combat. For Singed and Mordekaiser, Rylai's Rush is still going to be great, but for Rumble, you definitely want to be rushing the Leandris. Singed and Mord can then grab Leandris as a second or third pickup depending on the game. Leandris was already a core pickup on Teemo in Season 13, so with Demonic Embrace removed, you likely see Riftmaker become more of a staple pickup on the champ. One of the big meta shifting changes for the jungle in Season 14 revolves around Gore Drinker being removed. Highly contested junglers like Jarvan, Lee Sin, and Kane would run Gore Drinker in Season 13, so what do they look to prioritize now? Spear of Shojin Rush on all three of those champs is something to watch out for. Especially for Jarvan, he already liked going Shojin second in Season 13, so why not just grab it first and go into Black Cleaver second now? Sundered Sky will actually be a very interesting pickup on Bruiser Kane because the built-in heal will provide Kane with even more extended fight power. Vi is one of the only junglers who would consistently run Divine Sunderer, so with the item being removed, what will she be looking at? Experimental Hexplate has a lot of potential on Vi because so much of her strength is tied to her ultimate, and Hexplate's passive synergizes perfectly in that regard. You'll honestly have a ton of options on Vi as Sundered Sky and Trinity Force can work great with her too. If you want to play Lethality Vi, that's still an option too as Eclipse, the Collector, and Essence Reaver will all still be in the game. AP junglers will have a few more options to choose from in Season 14, with the introduction of Storm Surge and rework to Shadow Flame. Night Harvester is also being removed, so this will affect three AP junglers, in specific being Elise, Nidalee, and Gragas. Rocket Belt is highly likely to replace Night Harvester and become a staple pickup on those champions. Rocket Belt will now cost 700 gold less, coming in at 2500, and even though the stats are being lowered to compensate, having access to the active earlier on will feel really nice. A two-item core of Rocket Belt into Storm Surge is one to pay attention to on Nidalee, Elise, and Gragas, because the items come together to offer a nice mix of durability and burst. The bonus damage passive proc on Storm Surge will activate when you deal 35% of the enemy's health bar within 2.5 seconds, and all three of those champs can easily pull that off. You also gain 25% movement speed for 2 seconds when you proc the Storm Surge passive, which will feel amazing to reposition after you've dealt your damage. Imagine Nidalee jumping into a fight, one-shotting the enemy, and then just zooming away from danger. All in all, the reward for executing well with Storm Surge will be very high. You could rush Storm Surge if you're feeling really bold, but the margin for error will be very thin since the item offers no health. Evelyn and Diana are two other AP junglers who will have great potential with Storm Surge. For Diana especially, she's always been a champion who's had a very easy time getting into a fight, but getting out has always been an issue. That movement speed from Storm Surge will help her get in and get out much more efficiently. Rocket Belt, Storm Surge, and Zanyas looks like a really nice three item core if you're looking to play Diana jungle. One item that is going to make Fiddlesticks absolutely broken is Malignance. Malignance provides AP, mana, and haste, but it's the passive that is OP. The passive on Malignance gives you 20 ultimate haste, and whenever you use your ultimate, you burn the ground beneath the enemy, dealing damage and reducing the enemy's magic resist. The damage procs every second, and since Fiddle R lasts for 5 seconds, you get 5 procs of the Malignance passive off. Just look at the background gameplay here as to how disgusting this is. Comparing Malignance to Rocket Belt, it's not even close damage-wise, as Malignance deals 16, 28 damage as opposed to just 1035 from Rocket Belt. The fact that the Malignance passive can proc on multiple targets as well means that the DPS potential is so much greater than any other item if you're able to get a multi-man R off. A Malignance rush into Rocket Belt second and then Zanya's third is looking like a pretty solid three item core for Fiddle. For other mage junglers like Karthus, Lilia, Talia, and Brand, what will their builds look like? For Karthus, you might be thinking, well, wouldn't Storm Surge be super broken on him, especially as a late game pickup? We originally thought this as well, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, the Storm Surge bonus damage only procs on one champion, so you can't ult with Karthus and get insane value from it. The Malignance passive, on the other hand, does proc on all champions, so there's great potential with Malignance on Karthus for similar reasons to Fiddle. Talia is definitely a mage that will gravitate towards Ludens 
companion as she gets no use out of malignants. Remember, the new Leandris doesn't offer any mana at all, so Brand's Season 13 core build of Leandris and Rylai's may not be viable anymore. Brand is one champ where it's not as cut and dry as to which build path he will prefer, so let us know in the comments what you guys think will be best. Rod of Ages Lilia will have a lot more viability for Season 14 since Leandris no longer offers mana. A Rod of Ages rush into Leandris and Rylai's will be something to watch out for on Lilia. AD Assassin junglers will have a few more options to choose from in Season 14, with new items introduced and old items removed. Voltaic Cyclosword is a new lethality mythic, and it's passive works so that you deal bonus damage on your first attack, and this bonus damage can be recharged faster by dashing or using stealth. This will be a great snowbally rush option on champs like Rengar and Kha'Zix. Profane Hydra is the new lethality item that builds out of Tiamat, so we could see Rengar and Kha'Zix rushing the Tiamat to help with their clear, go into Voltaic Cyclosword as the first complete completed core item, and then complete Profane Hydra after. Ghostblade is still in the game, so for Talon, Lethality, Briar, Shaco, and Graves, they can continue rushing the item. Lethality Cane will be an interesting one to track since Duskblade is being removed. Duskblade had been the most popular Lethality item on Kane in Season 13, so he's now going to have to decide between Eclipse and Ghostblade. Eclipse actually no longer has any Lethality on it, so if you're looking to play this bursty assassin style of Kane, Ghostblade Rush is looking like the most optimal play now. Besides Duskblade, Prowler's Claw is one other Lethality item being removed, but it really shouldn't make a huge difference as there weren't any lethality junglers who were solely reliant on the item to succeed. Besides Voltaic, Cyclosword, and Profane Hydra, one other interesting new lethality mythic is called Opportunity. The passive on Opportunity is what makes it so unique, as you will gain 150 decaying movement speed over 1.5 seconds if you kill an enemy within 3 seconds of damaging them. Champions that can get in but have a harder time getting out are who should gravitate towards this one. Lethality Nocturne will have the greatest potential with Opportunity as he has no issues at all diving in with his R, but it's escaping after the fact where Opportunity will help massively. A build of Ghostblade, Axiom Arc, and Opportunity should be a really nasty 3-item core for Lethality Nocturne. Mid lane mages are going to see the biggest shakeup to their builds for any class of champions, so let's dive right in. Crown of the Shattered Queen, Everfrost, Ludens, Tempest, and Leandris are no longer the same as before. Crown and Everfrost are completely gone, while Ludens' Tempest is now called Ludens' Companion, and Leandris has had a bunch of its stats swapped around. Ludens' Companion works very similar to Ludens' Tempest and should be the standard rush option on the majority of mages. Leandris, on the other hand, will no longer be a viable rush on mid lane mages since it no longer provides any mana. Leandris now has just AP and health for its stats, while its passive deals percent health damage and ramping damage over time. So it's going to come down to Malignance, Rod of Ages, and Ludens Companion for your three staple rush options on the majority of mages. Malignance and Ludens provide nearly the exact same base stats, with Ludens offering 10 more AP, so it all comes down to the passives to really differentiate the two. Ludens passive is a stacking damage effect that can stack up to six times and will detonate when dealing damage with any ability. Malignant's passive is a damage over time effect that will only proc when dealing damage with your ultimate. Malignant's also offers 20 ultimate ability haste on top of the bonus R damage. So mages that are more reliant on their R to be effective, like Malzahar, Nivea, Swain, will be liking Malignant's the most. So then for all other mages, it comes down to Rod of Ages and Ludens, and since the items are very similar in nature to before, rush items should not change all that much in the grand scheme of things. Mal's was really the only mid lane mage who was very reliant on running Leandries, but since Malignance is such a perfect replacement, he should be completely fine. A lot of other mages like Zareth, Orianna, Syndra, and Victor swap between Leandris and Ludens depending on the game, and for those champs, it will be Ludens that reigns supreme now. After the first item is where things get really spicy, as this is where build variety will really thrive. You've now got Storm Surge and Crit Bloom, which are completely new options on top of all the old mage items. Storm Surge is going to be the staple second pickup on your burst mages. Remember, the passive procs when you deal 35% of the enemy's health bar within 2.5 seconds, so champions like LeBlanc, Annie, Zoe, Lux, and Syndra should all be loving Storm Surge. On your mages who deal dot damage, like Malzahar, Brand, and Cassiopeia, the new Leandris will slot in very nicely as a second or third pickup. Crypt Bloom is a bit of an odd one, as it's kind of a supporty burst item all in one. It's going to give you 30% magic pen, but then its passive is more utility focused, as it provides your team with a heal. It's a bit counterintuitive here, as you'd think that an item with magic pen would be more centered around burst 
testing someone out than healing you and your team. We think this one ends up being a lot more niche and is probably purchased quite rarely unless the passive heal is just way too overtuned. For your longer ranged poke mages like Zareth, Ziggs, and Velkaz, Horizon Focus will be the optimal second purchase now. Shadow Flame was very staple on these champs, but it's now more of an assassin item, while Horizon Focus will fit the niche of the artillery mage much better. Luden's into Horizon Focus is the two item core you'll want to try on those three. You'll get the most amount of ability haste from going this route, which synergizes perfectly when you're looking to poke and siege. Champions that can consistently burst squishy targets are going to get the best use out of the new Shadow Flame. The new passive on Shadow Flame allows you to crit when the enemy is below 35% health, dealing 20% more damage. Shadow Flame in combination with Storm Surge is going to make the lethal range for someone like LeBlanc pretty nuts. Luton's into Storm Surge and Shadow Flame is a three item core we can see many burst mages running for season 14. Even as a later game pickup on someone like Xerath, Shadow Flame's passive would help a ton with sniping enemies who are low on health with Xerath R. Now, Vladimir is the only mage who ran Night Harvester as a core pickup, so with the item being removed, what does he look for now? Cosmic Drive as a rush should be a great alternative, as Vlad actually has had great success with this already in the past. There will be a bunch of mid lane assassins who are influenced by the mage item changes, and one of the most notable is Fizz. Even though Fizz is an assassin, he's gravitated more towards Ludens in the past as his rush item, and that likely remains the case moving forward. The new Ludens being very similar to the old one should slot in nicely as a rush on Fizz. Fizz will actually have more one-shot potential in Season 14 because Riot has increased the AP on Zanya's from 80 to 120. Haste is gone and the item now costs 250 gold more, but 40 added AP is going to feel really nice in the mid-game for those one-shots. Nothing really changes with Cassidy and Echo and Katarina as their core builds remain intact. Akali, on the other hand, will see a bit of a shift as the changes to Shadow Flame should lead to Storm Surge being a more attractive second pickup. Rocket Belt into Storm Surge is a two-item core to pay attention to on Akali. Whether you want to call Vex a mage or an assassin, she needs to play more like an assassin in the later stages of the game, so we've got her grouped in here. Vex had been running Shadow Flame as a core second pickup in Season 13, so with the item changed, a setup of Ludens, Storm Surge, and Shadow Flame will be a really crazy burst build for her. As for some of the AD assassins, the introduction of Profane Hydra should be great for a few. Zed, Talon, Kiana, and Nefiri are ones to watch with Profane Hydra, as the fact that they now have a Tiamat lethality pickup will be amazing for their shove and roam playstyles. To really get around the map and snowball super hard, the two item core of Profane Hydra and Ghostblade will offer a lot of strength. As for some of the fighter mid lane champs that will be affected by the item changes, one of them is Silas. Silas will no longer have the option to build Everfrost or Night Harvester, which were previously his two rush items. This may mean that we see Rod of Ages make a comeback on the champion. Rocket Belt will be an alternative as well, and it should come down to those two because none of the other rushable mage items provide health. You could go Luden's Rush, but you'll be extremely squishy, which won't bode well for most games. Either Rocket Belt or Rod of Ages Rush into Cosmic Drive and Zanyas is what we expect to thrive the most on Silas. Slotting in Storm Surge somewhere should be viable as well if you're looking for more burst against squishier comps. Yasuo and Yone still have access to Kraken Slayer, Hullbreaker, and Infinity Edge, and ADC items in general have not been changed all that much, so their builds should remain quite similar to before. A few of the ranged AD mids like Ukshin and Corky will see their build shift slightly for Season 14. The fact Mythics are no longer a thing means you can now build Trinity Force and Infinity Edge on Corky. This will make a three item core of Trinity, Man Immune, and Infinity Edge super lethal and should bring a lot more power back to Corky. We tested the new ADC on hit item called Terminus on Uction and compared it to Kraken Slayer, but from our tests, Kraken always wins out as a rush item. As a later game pickup, Terminus could be an option for Uction, but we don't see it being a rush item for him. Even though there's only one brand new ADC item coming for Season 14, the fact Mythic items no longer exist and Gale Force is gone will lead to new builds for a bunch of champions. First off, let's take a look at the new item Terminus and whether it will be a viable rush option. You get attack speed, AD, and on hit damage along with a passive that provides stacking armor and magic resist and a second passive that gives stacking armor and magic penetration. Kog'Maw is one champion who I think everyone would expect to have great potential with Terminus, but after doing some damage tests, Blade of the Ruined King heavily wins out. With 5 auto attacks, Blade is dealing 927 damage while Terminus is only pumping out 793. So as for a rush item, Blade is definitely going to win out, but as you get later on into the game, that's where Terminus will slot in much better since you'll be able to get 
more benefit from its ramping passive in more drawn out fights. In those early game fights, the added upfront damage from Blade will be way more impactful to help Snowball. Same thing goes for other on hit ADCs like Varus and Callista. Terminus will be more of a late game pickup. Now with Gale Force gone, one champion who's affected the most by this is Jin. If you're playing Crit Jin, the core of Stormraiser, Infinity Edge, and Fire Cannon will be back in full force. Lethality Jin will still be an option as well, though with Ghost Blade, the Collector, and Fire Cannon. Now with Infinity Edge and Quick Blades no longer being mythic items, you will have the option to slot both into your build path. The question then becomes, are there actually any champions that would want to do this? As their first two items, probably not, but having both items eventually as a maxed out build, most definitely. Zeri, Tristana, Lucian, and Sivir are four ADCs that will take advantage of being able to purchase both IE and Quick Blades. General core builds for ADCs should not be changing all that much, however, the late game power of certain ADCs that can run both Quick Blades and IE will become stronger. Moving on to support now, the role is going to become so much stronger and have way more agency in Season 14. Your starting item will be the exact same for every single champion. However, once you finish upgrading it, you'll be able to choose a unique effect to cater to the champion you're playing. Zaxax Realm Spike is going to be the major poke support upgrade as it will deal bonus damage when you hit an enemy with an ability. Blood Song is the AD support upgrade as it will have the Spellblade passive which enhances your next attack after using an ability. There's a second part to Blood Song as well as you will actually increase the damage your teammates deal when you hit the enemy with a spell. Solstice Slay will be the melee engage support upgrade, as you'll gain bonus health and movement speed when you immobilize or slow an enemy. Your ally also gains the bonus movement speed, so forcing all in plays with this upgrade will be extremely easy. Dream Maker is the enchanter support upgrade, as healing or shielding allies will reduce damage they take, and also provide them with bonus magic damage on hit. Celestial Opposition is the fifth upgrade, and this one will be more viable on a wider range of champions. It's similar in nature to the old Crown of the Shattered Queen passive, where you will take reduced damage for two seconds after being hit, and then when this damage reduction wears off, you'll slow the area around you by 50% for 1.5 seconds. This one could rival Solstice Slay on melee engage supports as having that damage reduction when diving in will be very useful. Squishy enchanters could get good use out of Celestial Opposition as well into comps that have a bunch of assassins. So with the starting items covered, let's talk about a few of the more big ticket support pickups. Even Shroud and Radiant Virtue are being removed for Season 14, so this will cause a shift in price priority for melee supports. Locket is still in the game, so many will diverge back to that. However, there is a new tank support item called Trailblazer. Trailblazer is basically the dead man's plate for supports, as you gain armor, health, and movement speed, while the passive provides bonus movement speed for not just you, but your ally as well, and once you get the movement speed to max stacks, your next auto will slow the enemy. So since Locket offers both magic resist and armor, it will likely be the cookie cutter pickup on all melee supports. However, in games where the enemy comp is very heavy AD, Trailblazer will be the main rush item. Maokai and Bard are two champions who will most definitely love Trailblazer, but we can see many other melee supports picking it up as well. Another change that will benefit melee supports is that Frozen Heart will be more catered to supports, as its cost is dropping from 2700 to 2300 gold. The item will have the exact same stats, but just lowered a bit to compensate for the cost reduction. If you're playing against a very heavy AD enemy composition, we can see the two item core of Trailblazer and Frozen Heart being extremely powerful. For Enchanter supports, there is one new item addition called Dawn Core. This one will actually be the most expensive support item at 2700 gold and give you AP, haste, and base mana regen. Your base mana regen will be converted into heal and shield power and AP. You'll also gain 18 summoner spell ability haste. Dawn Core feels like a bit of a trap because its base stats are no better than supports items that cost 2200 gold, while the passive seems a bit underwhelming. It's hard to say until we actually see this item on live servers as to how powerful it will be, but it's another option for enchanters. One other support item change that will affect enchanters and mage supports is the removal of Chemtech Putrefire and the mini rework to Morello Namicon. Morello will now be more of a support item and will actually be gold efficient for season 14 as it's going to cost 2200 gold, give 90 ability power and 15 ability haste. Of course, it will have the Grievous Wounds passive as well. From the base stats alone, season 14 Morello is over 100% gold efficient, while the season 13 iteration of Morello was only 93% efficient. Chemtech Putrefire cost 2100 gold and only gave you 35 AP, so the fact you're getting 90 AP for 2200 gold is going to feel really nice on a lot of mage supports now. Someone like Zyra, who can easily proc the Grievous Wounds passive, should be loving the new Morello in games where the enemy comp has lots of healing. So overall, a ton going on in the support role for Season 14, and all these changes should only make the role even better than before. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill capped. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered 
with this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we are able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. Alright guys, that's going to wrap everything up for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you back soon.